Yes, ladies and gentlemen, of all the good causes that someone could be focusing on to protest, these Fox News people decide that they're going to complain about cats on campus. Now, it's well known that animals are good for emotional therapy, I and mean, they've used therapy dogs for many, many years. Well, this particular study said that it might be good to use cats, that some people react better to cats than dogs or whatever. Uh, but that's not what Fox News co-host Emily Campagno thinks. <laughs> yeah, but Kaylee, I don't think these kids need cats. I think they need discipline. I think they need a slap yep. in the face. Oy vey, is that how your parents treated you? I'm glad you're not my mother. I think I'll pass on that. But I'd like to let you know that with a cat, it's possible to have both. You can have lots of kitty cuddles, and occasionally a cat will give you a slap in the face. These are kids that can't even listen to a conservative viewpoint. They shout out speakers. They chase them off campus. But a cat will make everything better. Guess what? That doesn't work in the real world. No, a cat doesn't solve all your problems. Nothing can solve all your problems. But at least science shows that petting a cat can relieve stress. As soon as I could move off campus, I got a cat. Because as many people know, I'm autistic. I'm not lazy. I study. I have a brilliant brain, and I'll tell you more about that later on, but I do have a hard time handling a lot of people all day. And so as soon as I was allowed to move off campus after the first year when they make you stay on campus, I got an off-campus place and I got a cat. And that cat helped me through, you know, a lot of uh, stress at the end of the day. So what's so wrong with that? It's also part of the indoctrination. I mean, they are being trained you might go in there thinking, I've got to get my philosophy book. I've got to get, you know, the chemistry book. And then you're told effectively by this, the university, no, you need a puppy. <laughs> yes, we're being indoctrinated, but not in the way you think. This is not about uh, making us into wimps or, or, or turning us into, uh, as you call us, snowflakes. Oh, no, this is much more nefarious. You see, these cats are really alien beings from another planet. I mean, that's very obvious. If you put a picture of a cat with that nice little pointed chin and those slanted eyes right next to a picture of an alien, I mean, how can you miss it? And we've all had that situation where we can't find the cat. You look all over the house, there is no cat, nowhere. And then all of a sudden, right in the middle of the living room, there's your cat. Well, of course, what happened is the cat beamed up to the mothership that is orbiting our planet to report and then beamed back. And these cats, they want to infiltrate our universities because then they can cuddle up to the leadership, the future leaders of our world, the future scientists, future politicians, future entrepreneurs. And eventually they will be able to control the world. What's the matter? You don't believe that? Well, I think my tall tale is better than yours. I mean, this is certainly more entertaining than all that QAnon stuff. I don't think animal rights activists would be too proud of this either. I wouldn't want any college student manhandling my cat. What? Did I just hear you say you have a cat? Well, you can't tell me that you don't go home and cuddle that cat after a long, hard day of being angry and snarky at your audience. Nah, you know... You cuddle your kitty just like everybody else, and I'm sure that if you cuddle your cat, that other people can cuddle their cats too. And as for animal rights, <laughs> don't just throw that in there gratuitously. Since when do MAGA people care about animal rights? This is insanity. Give me a cup of coffee, a cookie, and a stack of books, mm -hmm. and I'm set. I don't need a puppy in my lap to study for exam. Aha, uh -huh, Emily. So you cope with stress by eating comfort food and drinking coffee. So you've got your own little comfort addictions. And as my wife said when she saw that video, nobody gets fat from cuddling a cat, you know? And it's certainly a whole lot better than getting addicted to alcohol or drugs or tobacco or coffee or other kinds of things that people use to cope. This is just another example of how uh, we are raising snowflakes. <laughs> because, I mean, if you honestly can't make it in college, then just drop out. Not only did I not drop out of school, 
I went on to become a rabbi and a writer. I've published seven books so far, lots of articles. And at age 75, I'm still going strong in spite of the fact, or maybe because of having a lot of cats. Kitty, 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 kitties. Here come the kitties. Here come the kitties. Come on. Come on, kitty, kitty, kitty cats. Let's go in. Now, as for snowflakes, let me tell you this. I know you mean that as an insult. I know you think you're cutting us down when you say we're a bunch of snowflakes. You think we're all a bunch of wimps. Well, let me tell you something. Compassion and gentleness is not weakness. And toxic masculinity is not strength. In the real world, as you guys love to put it, real men cuddle cats. And I'll tell you something else about snowflakes. I live in Minnesota, and we know very well here in the land of the snow <laughs> that one snowflake might not be much, but you get a bunch of snowflakes together, and they are a powerful force, sometimes an unstoppable force. And so I don't have any problems joining with my fellow snowflakes. And I want to say to you, huh, here's to you, Fox News.